tonight. Cloudy with occasional showers overnight. Low, 43. Chance of rain, 50%. Tuesday, cloudy with period. Tuesday night, cloudy with periods of rain, low 47. Winds could occasionally gust over 40 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Las Vegas, home to IBM Insight 2015, and home tonight to Weather Underground. What a fabulous weather day, by the way. Well, hey, do you want to be a better driver? Do you want to get weather alerts for your commute? Maybe even lower your car insurance bill? Well, guess what? There's an app for that. OctoU can do all those things, can monitor your driving style, give you suggestions, improvements on how to ultimately maybe reward you with lower insurance. You'd want that, right? Well, one of the men behind it, Umberto Caligari, joins us here as the head of digital at Octo Telematics. This seems too good to be true. How, how does all this work, and how are you using analytics and, and really analyzing someone's driving style to determine what's good and what's bad for them? So, um, first of all, thank you for having me here. And um, the application actually does more than just provide you with a discount of, of an insurance. It's just a consumer platform to put the consumer back in control of the driving generated data. So based on every variable that might influence it. So the amount of hours you sleep, the music that you're listening to, obviously the, the way in which you're driving, the weather condition. And um, that's for a purpose of self-awareness principally, but then obviously if you can cut yourself better deals on top of your data, why not? And how do you do that? How do you get a lower deal then? Do you, you, do you take this information about your driving style, you submit it to your insurance company, they're like, you're a pretty darn good driver. We're going to lower your insurance rate. And yeah, it's, it's not just for younger drivers. We find out that the main um, customers that are using that are in the either early 30s or mid 30s and then mid 40s, just before the teenagers. And um, yeah, basically we... The application automatically knows if you're driving or if you're just uh, riding a bike, if you're driving on, on an actual road or if you're in a shuttle to your next flight. Uh, it knows the context in which you're driving. Uh, so as I said, the you know, light condition, the traffic condition, if you're in a countryside or in a city, and the weather condition. And on top of all that, it reconstructs and, and, and analyzes your driving behavior generated events and gives you a score from 1 to 10 at a trip level. After a while, it gets pred predictive and it gives you uh, a pretty consistent, solid image of who you are as a driver, and that could cost a big, like that could cut off a better deal for you in insurance with retailers. For example, in Italy, we're doing that with a gas station. So if you drive well, you can save a amount of money. No and, joke. Yeah, that's impressive. We've seen apps out there that will warn you of uh, a police ahead or a speed trap. Mm -hmm. Octo, you can can warn you of impending weather conditions. Yeah, that's great. That's so we do also that kind of thing. In, it depends in, depending on the uh, on the on the countries, of course. This is a global app. And today we realize we um, released this great cool feature that we developed thanks to the weather company. So basically, uh, our algorithm knows where you're driving because this is not a navigation application so you don't have a point B for your final destination so we're able to reconstruct that based on how you drive and the streets that you're driving on and then thanks to the weather company data we're able to notify you in advance before you encounter any severe thunderstorm or whatever so you're able to proactively adjust and that's unprecedented that's that's, very that's cool. a, that is truly amazing yeah. But there's, there's such a big issue, I, I feel like, these days about privacy. Mm. And this, is there, is there a, an issue at all with, you know, OctoU being a little bit too much Big Brother? So, you know, the privacy is absolutely one of the core of our, of our proposition. So first of all, you have to accept to use OctoU and to sh even to share the data. You can say, no, I don't want to share the data, just keep it for myself. So no one's going to see your data. Second, secondly, this app is social, so you can add your friends and invite your friends and see how they drive and where they are. And that's a potential, a, a second threat, particularly being Italian. So you don't want, <laughs> you don't want people to find out where you, where, where you drive. So you can simply deflect it and you can decide what to share 
or what, or what not to share. And you know, after all, driving is the third main context in which each and every one of us spend their own life, office, home, and driving from a place to the other. We gonna gen and we are generating data that someone else is taking care of. So why, as a, as a, as a consumer, you don't want to be in charge of that? Right. That's it's awesome. Well, Umberto, thanks for being with us. Good to see you here Great at pleasure. Uh, IBM Insight. I'm getting ready to download the app right you now. You better. I don't, but I don't know if I want to know what it tells me about my driving. That could be pretty scary. So well, worst case scenario, you're improved. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Hey, stick around. When we come back. We go old school. Our Dave Schwartz, hard at work on his chalkboard, breaking down the best weather stats of the day. We'll see him next, right here on Weather Underground. You ever feel like you're spinning? Like you're stuck in the same place in life, just going round and round and round. Yeah, man, been there. No, actually spinning. Oh, we can fix that by going to Midas. They have a great selection of tires. Sorry, Doug, I thought you were trying to get deep. It's time to take a closer look at your tires. Get up to $160 back by mail on a set of four Goodyear, Cooper, and other select brands. Tires, brakes, oil, everything. can check on them. You can worry about them. You can even choose a car for them. Honey, are you okay? I'm okay. Love. We're okay. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. I've suffered for 18 years with dry, cracked hands. In the winter in Chicago, it's dry, it's cold, makes my hands even worse. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Guaranteed relief for dry, cracked hands. My hands feel better. I finally found relief. Learn more at O'Keefe'sCompany.com. Have you tried O'Keefe's? You know the love you feel for Olive Garden's fresh-baked breadsticks? Well, multiply that by a million. New breadstick sandwiches. Part of Olive Garden's lunch duo, starting at $6.99. Start the interview with a firm handshake. I know! Don't do that! Try Head & Shoulders Instant Relief. It cools on contact and also keeps you 100% flake free. <gasps> Try Head & Shoulders Instant Relief for cooling relief in a snap. Sleep. Remember when it welcomed you like a friend? Then it became more elusive. But why? When you have insomnia, it may affect the wake neurotransmitters in your brain, disrupting your wake and sleep messages. Balsamra is a prescription medicine for adults who have trouble falling or staying asleep. Balsamra is thought to help turn down wake messages by targeting and inhibiting the action of orexin, a neurotransmitter that plays a central role in sending wake messages. Only Balsamra works this way. Do not take Balsamra if you have narcolepsy. When taking Balsamra, don't drive or operate heavy machinery until you feel fully awake. Walking, eating, driving, or engaging in other activities while asleep without remembering it the next day have been reported. Balsamra should not be taken together with alcohol. Abnormal behaviors may include aggressiveness, confusion, agitation, or hallucinations. The temporary inability to move while falling asleep or waking up and temporary leg weakness have also been reported. In depressed patients, worsening depression, including risk of suicide, may occur. Alcohol may increase these risks. Side effects include next day drowsiness. Ah, <sighs> sleep. Ask your doctor about Belsanra. Did you know only 1% of supplements have earned the USP mark? An independent certification for quality and purity. I recommend Nature Made because they've earned the most of any brand. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended fish oil brand. I'm Mike Bettis. That's Sarah. Hi. Welcome to the set of a brand new show, Weather Underground. There'll be experts, bloggers, the smartest weather minds in the business on every screen you have 24 hours a day. Geeking out on what's happening in weather, how it happens, and why it's so freaking cool. Weather Underground, weeknights at 6 on the Weather Channel. Closed captioning brought to you by Eggland's Best Eggs. There's only one egg that just tastes better, with more vitamins and less saturated fat. Only Eggland's Best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs.
And welcome back, everyone. Cruising the streets of Las Vegas, the beautiful blue skies, warm temperatures, and the beautiful palms. Uh, we're in Las Vegas as the host of this year's IBM Insight 2015 and a brand new partnership between the Weather Company and IBM. We'll have some more details for you still to come. This is a special edition of Weather Underground. I'm Mike Bettis here at uh, Insight 2015. We've got something really special for you coming up here in just a little bit. We're at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. I'm excited to talk about a man who biked 3,000 miles on that bicycle right there, okay? 3,000 miles, but he did it, by the way, in his fastest time. But why? Oh, it's all about the weather and the analytics behind it. So he used science and numbers to help him finish two days faster than he's ever done this race before. And we're going to talk to him coming up here in just a little bit. In the meantime, watching the weather all across the country. For that, we're going to head back to meteorologist Sarah Dillingham at the Weather Underground Studios in Atlanta. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Mike. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of a look back at this day in weather history. Well, let's take you all the way back to this day in 2010. Now, these images that you're about to see, this was the result of an intense low pressure system that became known as the Octobomb of 2010. This storm dumped more than seven inches of snow in Duluth, Minnesota. As the storm swept across the upper Midwest, some wind gusts reached to nearly 80 miles per hour. The storm's lowest pressure bottomed out at 955.2 millibars, making it one of the lowest pressure pressures ever recorded for an extra tropical cyclone to come over the lower 48 states mm. and I've got winter weather expert with me Tom Nizzle and we're going to talk about this and these weather bombs as we've talked about and we've already used the term tonight bombogenesis that we could have a, a system this weekend but we're going to get to that in a minute but right now let's look at this storm oh just to go back and revisit this I and mean, mm -hmm. let me tell you the Great Lakes are down here so you can see the eastern Great Lakes mm -hmm. here the storm center up in Canada at this point but take a look at the circulation you know it, it, wow. it looks like like a hurricane, doesn't right, it, in many right. respects? And with that kind of central pressure, mm -hmm. it is just amazing. Exactly. Yeah, that pressure is equivalent to a Category 3 hurricane. Yeah. Now, there are different types of low-pressure systems, but still intense and, you know, cyclonic winds around. Yeah, them, and, you know, it's a matter of all this energy coming into the right place at the right time. This had a 180 to 190 mile an hour jet stream coming off the Pacific, which helped to fuel this and it just cranked up. Just incredible. So let's take a look at the setup here. So we had this intense low pressure system here. You can see all these cities impacted and we had really strong winds around this entire system. And I mean, when we talk about those isobars and being really tightly packed together, that's exactly what we had here. We weren't able to depict those here, but just incredible. Everything but the kitchen sink, including blizzard warnings in parts of the Dakotas. Right, and I mean, look at these stats when you compare it to some of the more intense storms there. We had the blizzard of 78, 958 millibars, and the wish of November in 2000, or in 1975, Edmund Fitzgerald storm. Yes, yeah. that was the fame Edmund Fitzgerald that uh, sunk that ship, the Great Lakes. This beat both of them. Yeah, incredible. It's amazing. Incredible. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at what's going to be happening in the coming days. You know, we've already talked about this, how we're going to have even some of the remnants of Patricia play a part in what's about to happen. Yeah, again, bringing all this energy together, and there's a tremendous amount of energy in the atmosphere. Here is the remnants of Patricia. There is that storm in central Canada yep. that's going to head southeast and really envelop all of this into one major feature. So we go into uh, tomorrow. We see all this moisture in the southeast. It all gets driven up along the eastern seaboard here as this jet stream just takes all that and works it along here. And then we can see the parent low here, this big storm system that really controls all of this mm -hmm. over the next three days. Now, we were saying earlier that it may not be forecast to be exactly a bomb. I think the pressures you, pressure drops, you were saying it needs 24 millibars in 24 hours. Right. But this one may not get that much. We get to 10.02, and this is going to be Wednesday afternoon. 24 mm -hmm. hours later, watch how these features come together. It drops from 1002 to 880, uh, 982 millibars. So it's about a 20 millibar drop, mm -hmm. not, not quite the 24 by definition. Right, but still, nonetheless, we're going to have a big windstorm potentially. You know, you saw those, these are those isobars that we talk about when they're really closely spaced together. That's where the winds are most intense. So that's, you know, that's going to be the impact. Whether or not it's a bomb, big winds for the upper Midwest. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, if we take a look at this, this is tomorrow evening. Mm -hmm. Now, ahead of the system, we're actually going to get very strong southeast winds coming up in places like Erie, Pennsylvania, noted for strong southeast winds, are actually going to gust 40 to 50 uh, miles an hour or more. Mm -hmm. And then as we go into the yeah, Wednesday the and Thursday time frame, so there's a high wind gust there. Mm -hmm. They shift over to Buffalo later in that Wednesday time frame, and then they work actually work their way out to the East Coast. So New York City and into Boston 
Boston. Actually going to see wind gusts 40 to 50, 45 to 50 miles an hour across the coast. And that's probably a sustained wind of about 25, maybe 30. Yeah, it's good. It could have some damage there if there's still yeah. some leaves on trees and all of the rain. And that's the thing too. Yeah, we're talking about winds ahead of this next system coming in the upper Midwest because we've got that front first and that's going to kind of moisten the soils. Then you get strong winds yeah. and more rain that, yeah, like you just said, the, the trees may just topple because there's nothing to hold them in the ground. Yeah, and, and what happens then, the low is going to be sitting up here. We get the post cold frontal winds across mm -hmm. the Great Lakes. Again, look at the gusts here, 40 to 50 miles an hour here in that Thursday time frame. It's going to be some really high waters on the lakes and the east end exactly. of Lake Erie might even get a little bit of a sash. Yeah, right. This is a very interesting term. That sash is kind of where we get that. It, this sash is wind driven. That wind just acts kind of like a storm surge, but it's in a closed yep. body water in that lake kind of shoves it up on one side and when it sloshes back, it's got to go somewhere. Absolutely. Right? So. And look at this, look at this forecast here. 54 yeah. degrees International Tuesday. Falls, they're getting to live up to their name here with the 40 degrees and a little bit of wet snow. Oh, and rain changing to snow. Well, Tom, it's getting That's your season, so here. we may see more of this in the coming weeks. Yeah. All right. Well, right now it's time for Dave's Wonders of Weather, and we would call it Dave's Well. Here he is. Hey, Mike. It's Dave back All right, in the Sarah, studio. Thank you very much. Uh, Dave, knock it out of the park here. I'm sure there's no lack of weather stats to talk about on this Monday, huh? You got that right. You know, we're still talking rain from the remnants of, of Patricia. Here in Alabama and Mississippi, we had some records to go along with what happened in Louisiana and Texas. Tuscaloosa, Alabama gets nine tenths of an inch of rain, but they broke the record today. The old record was 0.89, so they broke their record by a hair. A hair. Here in Meridian, Mississippi, we had 3.62 inches. That almost tripled the old record. So we beat this record by a mile. Exactly right. Now in Waco, you know, it was, an, it was a nice sunny day here this afternoon. We had some sunshine. Dallas too, what a pleasure. They're still crunching the numbers here. From Friday morning to Saturday morning in Waco, that's ACT, 9.65 inches of rain. That happens to be the most rain Waco has ever picked up in a 24-hour period. But I'll tell you, I'm ready to get rid of this rain business, you know, and talk about something else. It, today just happens to be the record, the day that another record fell, 24-hour snowfall record, and that was in uh, Leeds, South Dakota, where in 1996, in 24 hours, we picked up 39 inches of snow. Huh? How's that? How's that? Can I shovel your walk? Uh, yeah. How much would that be? $200. Wow. Now, Mike, are, are you still with me or are you like playing the slots at this point? I got you, brother. You got, I got me? you, okay. bro. You know, it's, 80, yep. it's 82 right now where you are. 82. Have you been able to get outside today? It's great. Oh, it's fantastic. It's beautiful today. Relative humidity, 20%. I hope you brought some clothes because when you get back to Atlanta, <laughs> I, I, I mean outer clothes. <laughs> what, what if I didn't, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> when you get back to Atlanta, it's going to be nasty. It, nasty. This is what's been happening today. Really? Yeah. I mean, temperature's been falling all afternoon. We're down in the mid-50s. at the pre it, you may get in here, it may be 50 degrees and raining tomorrow, Mike, because of evaporational cooling. We've got cool air coming in this way and rain coming in that way. The rain is falling into the air, moistening the air. As that happens, Boo. I'm sorry, Boo. sorry. <laughs> as, as the rain falls, it moistens the air, so the moisture level goes up and the temperature goes down. Evaporation, you evaporate water off your body. When you come out of the pool, you cool down. If it keeps raining, the temperature falls some more because more moisture is going into, the, more evaporation is taking place. But as more evaporation is taking place, the moisture level of the air goes up. And eventually, we kind of meet. Evaporational ability of the air is over at this point. That's where relative humidity is 100%. And let me tell you something, Mike, when you get back in here tomorrow, if you're lucky, it'll be 50 degrees and raining. So you got your jacket, your galoshes, your umbrella, the whole schmear. Are you set? Um, Dave, I think maybe I would just set up the Weather Underground Bureau here in Vegas. It just sounds <laughs> a lot better than being back <laughs> in, in, in that mess. But 
What happens in Vegas right, stays in Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, including, <laughs> including the weather, apparently. Dave, thank you so much. Appreciate you that. See you tomorrow, brother. Hey, are you feeling lucky? Uh, you should right here on Weather Underground as we continue live from Las Vegas. Still to come for you this evening, we're going to introduce you to a man who used IBM weather technology, weather technology to bike across America in record time. How he outraced the weather to set a personal best time. We're live with Dave Hosey when we return. How he used science to his advantage. When your cold makes you wish you could stay in bed all day, you need the power of new Theraflu Express Max. Uh. New Theraflu Express Max, the power to feel better. I tried Depend last weekend. It really made the difference between a morning around the house and getting a little exercise. Only Depend Underwear has new Confidence Core technology for fast absorption and the smooth, comfortable fit of FitFlex protection. Get a coupon at Depend.com. If you have moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis like me, and you're talking to your rheumatologist about a biologic, this is Humira. This is Humira helping to relieve my pain and protect my joints from further damage. This is Humira giving me new perspective. Doctors have been prescribing Humira for 10 years. Humira works for many adults. It targets and helps to block a specific source of inflammation that contributes to RA symptoms. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Talk to your doctor and visit Humira.com. This is Humira at work. La, 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 la. They try to put us in a box. They try to categorize us the same. We got to dress like this. We got to talk like that. But we say no more. Tonight we change things. Freedom. There's something in the air. Something in the sand. It's called all right. And it's something you can only find here. Jamaica, home of all right. Why do we insist on 100% Alaskan whitefish? Why do we always hand dip in our famous batter, cook it to golden perfection, and serve it with fries for just $1.99? Because at Long John Silver's, we think you deserve more for $1.99. Remember the hassle of vacuuming before the Dyson V6 Motorhead Cleaner gave you powerful suction and standout performance without the hustle of a cord. Stay! 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 More stay parole. Sit. Sit. More sit parole. Watch me! Watch me! All over! All over! All over! Whoops! More who's training who parole. Bounty is two times more absorbent. So one roll of Bounty can last longer than those bargain brands. So you get more life per roll. Bounty, the long-lasting, quicker picker-upper. Bridgestone's new drive guard tires are engineered to take a puncture and go up to 50 miles. We can drive 50 miles on a flat, and you have an app that makes nails pop up? Yep. We could roll the world. <laughs> but I've got carpool at three, though, so oh, that time. we could, like, mess with the world. And the race across America continues. Dave Hossie enjoying a cool mountain breeze as he made his way through the Rockies. Not as hot to climb this son of a gun. He has been powering across the country with strength and health. He also has cutting edge technology on his side. I'm wearing um, a few devices on me, an Android phone, a bio harness, temperature sensor a pill that I will swallow. It also includes some environmental things, including wind changes and temperature predictions. We could view the winds were going to be good and favorable, so we slept when we were tired instead of keep going and trying to push through a bad wind. It's really groundbreaking technology. Our next guest biked 3,000 miles across 12 states in eight days, and we've done the math for you. That is about 22 hours a day with two hours for sleep. 
that's about it, okay? The race across America takes riders through some of the toughest environments, mountains, plains, deserts, and all kinds of weather. Joining us now here on Weather Underground is Dave Hossey. He completed this epic race five different times, by the way. Doug Barton from IBM is with us as well. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. All, all right, Dave. How was it? Your fastest time ever. Is it really the analytics that did it all for you? It is. Uh, a lot of the analytics. So the uh, advantage to having all of that information with us going 3,000 miles is uh, we can measure all of the information, core body metrics, know all of that data and keep me safe, keep me healthy, keep my core body temperature in check using ice to keep my body cool, and then uh, plan and predict good times to rest along the course. So when you're only stopping seven times in eight days to sleep, you've got to plan those out pretty efficiently. Right, Dave, now you, I mean, for, for cyclists, I mean, aerodynamics is important. You had a lot of stuff strapped to you. How yeah. cumbersome was that? Um, it, you know, so there was about two pounds of gear strapped to my back. So I got used to it over time. It was a little bit of a pain, but for the information we were getting, it was worth all of the, uh, the pains of keeping batteries charged and stuff. It really led to good results in the race. All right, Doug, yeah. uh, this, there's a lot of science behind there his, his uh, race across America. IBM in hooking him up here. What did IBM learn from the experience? Well, I think there's a couple things we learned is that data that used to be kind of incidental to riding the bike, you know, you might have a, uh, a bike computer tell you your speed, might tell you even your power if you're more advanced uh, amateur cyclist, but we can actually put that data to work. And the way we put it to work for Dave is to make sure that every watt of power he put into the pedals got him further down the road. And it actually had a lot to do with being able to predict where he would be so we could look at the weather he would experience at the time he was there. There were, there were moments, Dave, where weather played a very large role in your trip. A couple of circumstances where you were going through thunderstorms or very near thunderstorms, and that wind is everything to a cyclist. Yeah, you always want a tailwind, obviously. The advantage we had is that we chose to rest at certain points when maybe the wind conditions weren't favorable. So we would sleep at those points and then proceed down the road when we had more favorable conditions. So we limited those bad weather experiences to literally we didn't see rain or storms where many of the other racers for a day rode through massive thunderstorms and heavy headwinds. We were ahead of that by monitoring our progress and where we should be on the course. We're actually getting the analytics from you right now. <laughs> from the from the uh, from the trainer that you're on right now, what are we measuring, Doug, on Dave right now? Yeah, right now we're measuring the power he's putting into the pedals. We're keeping track through his biometrics. He's wearing what we call a bio harness, so we, we got his breathing rate, his heart rate, ECG, um, core body temp. Core body temp is another indicator. You know, one of the things that that is worth mentioning: half the racers that start this race do not finish, and they generally suffer from some form of heat illness. Mm -hmm of efforting well above a, a safe body core temp. And that, that, that limit is usually about 102 degrees. So we monitored that to keep Dave safe through the desert conditions. Yeah. Because you can't win a race here, you Amazing. can't finish, Amazing. right? Amazing. Yeah. Real quick, just a couple seconds left. Is this the future of sports in general? Well, hey, uh, I think this is making his fitness Right, have the biggest impact on a race. And I, I think it's it's here whether we're ready for it or not. So yeah, I, I do think it is the future. Doug, Dave, yeah. thank you so much for being here. I, I would like to have one of those those straps on me because I feel like I'm about to pass out. So, <laughs> maybe, Quick. Maybe it's like, stop for me to stop. I should just go gamble. I love you. Love you too. One minute. We need to do this, yes. Be good. Bye. Letting go. I'll say a word. It's a little easier when you've saved for college with State Farm. How to make an awesome weather science show. Take three scientists. That's us. The scientists. Yeah. They know that. Add the forces of nature. Stuff. Mix in some crazy experiments. Lit my hand on fire. Why? Because of science. Oh, that is so cool. And then... Go! Who said science isn't fun? Three 
scientists walk into a bar. Bottoms up Sunday nights at 10 on the Weather Channel. And join the community now on Facebook.com slash 3scientists. Currently in our area, 51 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, cloudy with occasional showers overnight. Low, 43. Chance of rain, 50%. Tuesday, cloudy with periods of rain. High, 49. Chance of rain, 90%. Rainfall near a half an inch. Tuesday night, cloudy with periods of rain. Low, 47. Winds could occasionally gust over 40 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. If you have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, isn't it time to let the real you shine through? Introducing Otesla, a Premolast. Otesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats plaque psoriasis differently. Some people who took Otesla saw 75% clearer skin after four months. And Otesla's prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. Don't take Otesla if you are allergic to any of its ingredients. Otesla may increase the risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Side effects may include diarrhea, nausea, upper respiratory tract infection, and headache. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Ask your doctor about Otesla today. Otesla, show more of you. Expose the black beneath the white. In light of day, in dark of night, when winter shuts down work and schools. Come with resolve and powerful tools. Endure through every push, salt, and stack until your streets are back to black. Welcome, folks. I'm Keith Hernandez. And I'm Walt Clyde Frazier. Great to be back, Clyde. Sure is, Keith. Hold the show. That gray beard is a no-go. Your beard's lost its mojo. You look like a hobo. In five easy minutes, but just for men in it. Here's the kicker, your beard will look thicker. <laughs> Guys? These rhymes won't end until you use just for men. My name is Joe. My name is Lori. I'm Eric, and I took the Sudden Link Speed Test Challenge. I made the switch to Sudden Link because my internet service was exhausting slow. We could barely stream Netflix before. Constant Netflix buffering. And now, no problems. Go to speedtest.sunlink.com and see how much easier life could be. Take the challenge, see for yourself. Sudden Link, more power to you. Get 50 meg high-speed internet for $35 a month when you bundle. Very intense right now. Oh my god. That's blacked out. This is so cool. Welcome back to Underweather Underground. You're taking a live look at Las Vegas, where we've got Mike Bettis joining a few uh, notable characters there. We see David Kenny there, just to the right of him there. This is at the IBM Insights 2015 conference. We're going to toss to them in just a moment, but right now we're going to answer some of your questions. So it's time for sounding off, where you send us your comments, your questions, your concerns, your photos, all that good stuff. All right, so now our first question, we've got uh, winter weather expert Tom Nizzle and storm specialist Carl Parker with us now. So let's get right to it and take our first question. We've got some good ones tonight. We've seen a few of them. Uh, let's see where our first one is coming from. There we go, from Rob. He says, since the drought in California has dropped the Central Valley many feet in elevation, wouldn't that make it way more flood prone? And this was a very interesting discussion, and this is all related to the drought. 
that we've the incredible drought we've seen in California. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really all about the groundwater that they've been pumping out because you know uh, air is going to take up less space than water will. It's going to allow the ground to compress, Compressive. and a lot of that sinking actually happened around the middle of last century. That's when there was a drop of about 50 feet in some parts of the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, and it hasn't been as drastic as of late, but as we were saying a moment ago, I would imagine that there are going to be some bowl-like features as yeah. a result yeah. of that. I would think so as well, yeah. and that obviously will make them more pl uh, flood prone. Yeah, so yeah. That's, and that's a tremendous drop. I didn't it's realize crazy. that when you had mentioned that, that mm -hmm. it was that far. Yeah, 50 yeah. feet. Yeah. Yeah. So we've seen it before, and unfortunately, you know, we've, we've already seen it again, so we'll see if that does really make a difference. It makes sense that it might. Yeah. All right, so our next question we're going to take a look at. It's another good one here. And this is coming from Larry. Well, we get some energy here in South Carolina from the remnants of Patricia. <laughs> and that's a very good question. It, it, you know, it's a little bit there, but this, that low is really starting to kind of break apart now. Yeah, I'd like bit. to use that term, but there may be some DNA in there, right? So yeah. the moisture, certainly, mm -hmm. it's all being advected or moved northward into the Carolinas. Some of that is probably from Patricia. Yeah, we were also talking about the inertial stability of this thing. You know, you've got the yeah. most powerful hurricane to have ever mm -hmm. occurred in the Atlantic or yeah. Eastern Pacific. Any storm that's been named a hurricane has never been stronger than that. And so you've got a really intense little core, and that thing is still going strong right, right now, right along yeah. the Gulf Coast. But it is going to wind down as it's moving over land next yeah. couple of days. Yeah, and we may have have that come into play in our little bomb of Genesis the thing bomb, we've been yep, talking about with another well. system coming in. All right, right, this is our last question, last one of the evening, and it comes from Craig. If Patricia was the strongest storm recorded as a Category 5 hurricane, do you think there should mm. be a Category 6 or <laughs> higher? <laughs> and we've addressed this, and, you know, with maybe climate change and storms increasing in intensity, maybe it would require a status change a little bit. It's an interesting question. Well, it is, and if the top end of the scale is moving, yeah. right, then maybe it's time that we do think about that seriously. It, this one would have been a Category 6 if you yeah. extrapolate out the, the scale. Wow. Yeah. Just, yeah. just in, boggles the mind, An it? incredible storm to imagine that much energy bundled up in one spot, yeah. you know, for, for that period of time. Just incredible. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for sending in your questions. Always enjoy your comments. Thank you, Carl, and thank you, Tom. So right now, let's take a look at what's going on outside your window. We were going to go to the Gulf Coast here, where we've still got some rain. This has wound down a little bit, actually a good bit, from what we saw earlier this morning, where we had just some flooding rainfall there uh, along the Gulf Coast in Pensacola, Florida. We were looking at you this morning. There's some showers there in your area now, just off to your east. And Panama City, you're going to miss that heavier band. Uh, just near you and also some uh, showers there in our Apalachicola. Moving off to the west, another band of showers about to move into Mobile. And we've already seen some heavy rainfall, so some flash flooding is certainly possible with those saturated soils there along uh, I-65 there. Uh, if you're headed out, take care of yourself. All right, right now we're going to head it, send it back out to Mike out in Las Vegas. All right, thank you very much, Sarah. We're here in Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino at IBM Insight 2015. And before we go, a little what we learned this evening. And we've got the guys here, uh, John Salenza, Paul Walsh, including uh, Weather Company CEO David Kenny as well. You can learn so much at these conferences. I mean, there's just a wealth of information here. Uh, but for me, I think I learned, I mean, where do I begin? But uh, how, how you can monitor weather when it comes to your driving, when it comes to your athletic endeavors, and it just makes you more efficient and more aware. And we're, do, we're doing a better job of it each and every single day. It's amazing. Awesome. What about you? So you spoke today, by the way. I did speak so this So probably a lot of people learned from you today. I don't know about that, but, but while I was speaking, we had the president of the American Red Cross come up, Jack McMaster. He talked about how much more precision we have in our forecast, what that meant with the hurricane on Saturday, knowing precisely where she was going. With Patricia, they were able to be way more efficient at the Red Cross to put the people where they really needed to be. Um, and also because they could warn people, it doesn't look like there were hardly any fatalities, which is awesome, considering think, the magnitude of that Do you that think storm. that's kind of the next incarnation of emergency management, is the efficiency of the message and the forecast? The, yes, and the efficiency of the resources to get to the right place at the right time. Right. I totally believe we can improve emergency management and are already. Yep. yep. Paul? Well, you know, of course, this is sort of my wheelhouse, weather and analytics and business. And being here, just kind of my mind was kind of blown because of the scale and the creativity and the technologies now that are just exploding. It's, it really is a new time, I think, for the weather, uh, the, for meteorology and the application of weather. Yep. And the fact that we've got these partners, for example, at IBM, with all of these resources, all of this technology, to be able to blend with the weather information, the ability of 
weather data to be integrated into both business as well as government actions to make a difference in all of our lives is, is uh, amazing. And the fact that we're just really expanding, exploding in terms of our ability to be able to do that is amazing to me. And I, I, so I can't pick out one just other thing other than my mind <laughs> there's is a, There's a lot. Blown. There's, there's a lot. It's been That's an amazing sure. day. The pace is picking up, uh -huh. for sure. I'm like crazy. John, how about you? What'd you learn today? I learned about the, the incredible impact weather has on lives in watching that video of those kids in that bathroom and just the video of that sink. I could imagine that it would be burned into my head for the rest of my life what it looked like in that room and what it felt like. And at the same time, gathering that weather information made it so a human could ride for 34 right. hours straight and ride 475 miles in one day. It's just amazing. So I John is a new goal now. <laughs> yeah, challenge, right? Because you ride, you ride quite a bit. I was, I was really blown away about how they would, they forecast when the wind was going to be a headwind. Yeah. Hey, let's go ahead and take a break right now and catch a quick nap. And all the other racers were going right through that headwind where he wasn't. I can tell you from riding a bike, it is an incredible effect, the wind. And the tailwind makes or breaks a day. Yeah, mm. it really does. Terrific. But John, Paul, David, thank you all for being here. And thank you for watching this evening. Hope you had a good time. We certainly did. We'll see you tomorrow night on Weather Underground, right back from our studios in Atlanta, Georgia. For all of us here at Weather Underground, have a great night. Thanks for watching, and remember, together we know more. All right. <laughs> Zero visibility in bad weather. Cockpit confusion. Total destruction.